McLaren Racing just unveiled their brand new MCL36 and just like the AMR22 this is a full car launch with a lot of interesting technical details for us to take a look at, so let's do that shall we? Okay, so here we have it, the brand new McLaren MCL36. So this will be McLaren's 2022 car and there's definitely a lot of interesting things to talk about, but first let's talk about that livery. So when it comes to the livery, I think that this is a major downgrade from McLaren last year and they definitely know how to do a livery. So if you can remember that brilliant golf livery that they ran at Monaco, they definitely know how to design a car. And I honestly have loved the design of their car for the last two seasons even though I see the point of them trying to do something new for these new regulations I just think that this is not it so there are some details here just like the ways that the number is at front or how tiny the number is at back and this will make the cars just very tricky to identify both on track and on TV because these numbers are just tiny and there's not a lot of contrast between the blue and the uh, orange of the McLaren, that papaya orange that they're famous for. But most importantly for me, I think that there's just something around this zone of the car right here that doesn't really work for me when it comes to the livery. Now, I think that it's just too, there are just too many things happening at once with this black line, with this blue part down here that doesn't connect to the top up here and with this just random cut in this blue zone right here I think that aesthetically there's just something that doesn't work for me so I don't really like the design of the McLaren that much this year but that's something that I think will grow on me if this car starts winning races okay but now let's talk about the actual very interesting details in a McLaren MCL 36 because there are a lot of them okay so firstly this is the first team that you can see that is using a pull rod suspension so you can see that there's a pull rod here at the front so most other Formula 1 teams tend to use a push rod setup which is when a rod starts here and then goes down to here and connects to the wheel right about here whereas you can see that McLaren is using a pull rod which means that the rod will come from the bottom of the car and then connect here on top of the wheel. Now this is something that we were expecting Formula 1 teams to do in the 2022 regulations because of the larger wheels and wheel covers they will allow for a pull rod suspension and also because they the 2022 rules mandate that this part right here has a certain size and that's much better for introducing a pull rod. Now when it comes to running a pull rod suspension versus a push rod suspension there's really nothing to be gained here in terms of suspension dynamics and it's just a game of packaging mostly. So if you had the push rod going from top to bottom all of your suspension components would have to be stored here in the top of the car whereas with a pull rod that you can see right here all of the components of the suspension like the springs and dampers will be stored in the bottom part. Now this has an immediate advantage when it comes to the center of gravity of the car because of course you want your center of gravity to be as low as possible and the pull rod setup helps with this. But as I said in my previous Aston Martin video, the reasons that I think that teams are switching to the pull rod suspension is actually to keep the airflow going into the side pods as clean as possible. So you can imagine that if you had a push rod coming from here, the air going into the side pods would have, go would have to go through these two obstructions. Whereas with a pull rod setup, you just have this one of structure here of the suspension arms and the suspension arms are very well molded in order to keep that airflow pretty unrestrained and to keep it pretty clean. So that's one of the definite advantages of running a pull rod setup at the front. You keep much cleaner airflow to the side pods here and I think that's very interesting. Now talking about the side pods we also see something very interesting. So the McLaren as we know is running the same Mercedes power unit as that Aston Martin that we saw yesterday and I've got a picture here comparing the two and you can see that the approaches that they, both teams had to the side pods are very very different. So here on the top you have the AMR22 and you can see that the car has these very big strakes around the top and these are called the cooling louvers. So this is a new technique for cooling the car that's now legal in 2022 where it means that the cool air will take to the side pod here from the front and then the air instead of going out of the back just like we did in previous Formula 1 seasons the air will come out here on the top by these shark gills and this will generate a lot of turbulent hot air around this region so this is a very interesting approach and we will have to see how it works but you can see that McLaren for the same Mercedes power unit is actually using a much much more classic cooling setup so whereas 
in the Aston Martin the air comes out of the top, in the McLaren the air just comes in from the front just like the Aston Martin, but then it will go through the inside of the side pods and then it will just leave in the back here. Now personally I think that McLaren's approach is much better because if you think about it, with this setup where the air just comes in from the front and then cleanly gets out in the back not affecting any aerodynamic device you just have a very clean and controlled airflow whereas with the Aston Martin you have the air coming in but then you cannot assure the clean air in this area right here because you will have a lot of hot air just coming out of this region and now I'm sure that they have studied all of this and their, their goal at Aston Martin was to try and make the rear packaging of the car as small as possible in this region so you can see that the Aston Martin is much thinner than the McLaren in this region right here but I think that McLaren's approach will be better and you can also see by comparing the Aston Martin to the McLaren that McLaren doesn't have this big bolt right here and this again has to do with our cooling setup so whereas Aston Martin has tried to shrink wrap that Mercedes power unit to the limit they, so, they, so they needed to put this cooling bolt right here McLaren has a more loose uh, rear end which means that they are not putting the bodywork as tightly around the engine as possible and what this will allow them to do is to have a much more controlled airflow right here and I think that we saw last year that the McLaren performed much better than the Aston Martin and I just think that this was one of the reasons. So this kind of kills any concerns that I had with the cooling of the Mercedes power unit because you can see that a team like McLaren can deal with that very easily. Okay, but something that's very very interesting with the McLaren and that some of you guys actually pointed out in the comments is the fact that McLaren kind of switched their suspension system all around. So whereas in the past McLaren cars and all Formula 1 cars had a push rod setup in the front and then a pull rod setup in the back which is like this McLaren has actually switched the system and switched the game up where to the fact that now they have a pull rod in the front and a push rod in the back now I think that this is very interesting because Formula 1 teams due to packaging reasons usually had a pull rod in the back and a push rod in the front but now McLaren has decided to switch things up and let me actually try to explain to you why so in my opinion for the 2022 regulations the most important component is not anymore the rear wing for the downforce at the back of the car is actually the floor. So what McLaren is trying to do here with the push rod pull rod setup is trying to assure that the airflow to the floor is as clean as possible and then that in the rear of the car that we don't get to see very easily they're trying to get components out of this bottom part right here in order to assure that the flow to the diffuser is as clean as possible. Now I think that this is a very interesting approach and this will definitely play a little bit with the usual vehicle dynamics but I think that if McLaren can pull this off they will be very ahead of the game because suspension setup will be one of the major parts that will define the performance performance of the cars in the 2022 regulations because you really want the car to be as flat to the floor and as stable as possible and so the suspension is a really really important aspect of that. Okay but now actually going into the aerodynamics of the MCL36 you can see that McLaren unlike Aston Martin has decided to go with the swept down front wing right here. So Aston Martin had a very interesting setup where in the middle portion of the front wing their wing would actually curve upwards and then continue the, cur the straight right here. Now I think that McLaren's design is very interesting because even though Aston Martin's design allowed for cleaner airflow to the floor, what it meant was that the wing had kind of almost no downforce generating potential around the, f the middle end and what this meant was that Aston Martin really had to curve the front wing a lot in this uh, middle section of each side in order to generate the right amount of downforce, whereas McLaren's approach is m looks more like the Haas and what this means is that they are trying to get the air to go through the floor through this little slot right here instead of curving the whole wing upwards but what this does mean is that they can produce more downforce through the entire section of the wing instead of just in these portions right here. So something also very interesting in the wing that I see a lot of teams are doing is this tiny little piece right here because you remember that in the previous front wings the front wing elements actually came to about here and then there was this section where there could be no elements well teams use this section to generate a tipping edge vortex right here and this vortex was supposed to be outlawed for 2022 and one of the purposes of this vortex was actually to try and control the, uh, the outwash of the car and try to put 
and tried to push the dirty air out of the floor of the car. And this was supposed to be outlawed because, as you know, vortices generate that dirty air and that wake that the 2022 rules really want to avoid. But McLaren and Haas and Aston Martin actually actually put their front wing adjustment flap right here and they made it a triangle. And what this will mean was that they will have the same vortex right here. It won't be as powerful because it's just a tiny little edge. But still, this is some of the aspects where I see teams trying to get around the regulations. And it's one of the most interesting aspects of seeing these car launches, the ways that teams are trying to get around the regulations in order to regain some of that airflow control back. Now, something also very interesting that you can see from the McLaren is that there are zero Venturi tunnels. So McLaren is the only team that decided to run without any Venturi tunnels. And of course, I'm joking, McLaren is completely hiding their floor setup, so you cannot see any of the strikes that you saw with the Aston Martin or with the Haas. This was completely omitted from this render in order not to show any of their secrets. And what this indicates to me, and when you joined it with this picture that you see that McLaren has a very interesting floor layout right here, you can see that McLaren is trying to hide their game until we reach Barcelona. So this doesn't necessarily mean that they have reached some kind of magical floor design. It just means that they think they have got something that other teams don't have. But if we see this car have a shakedown just like we saw the Aston Martin have yesterday at Silverstone, I think that we will finally get to see McLaren's floor. And for that reason, for me, one of the most interesting aspects of preseason testing this year will be when a car crashes or when it stops on the track with a technical problem and it has to be lifted up by a crane, we will be able to see every single technical detail in the Venturi tunnels and in the floor. And you can bet that there will be loads and loads of photographers and team personnel running to a car if it is lifted up in order to try to cover the car before their secrets get out, but that's what McLaren is trying to do with these renders right here. So just as a finishing note, you can see right here all of the three real cars for 2022 that we saw launched right now. And one of the main concerns that people had with the 2022 regulations was that the cars were going to be indistinguishable and that there would be no room for technical innovation. Well, but now we have here three 2022 cars and three full cars, not just as like the show car that Red Bull showed us for some reason. You have three full cars with a lot of technical details and you can really spot the differences with the naked eye. You don't need any CFD software to spot the differences. You can really see the difference. So you have three different cooling setups amongst the Haas, the AMR22 and the MCL36. And you can see that in this leading part of the floor here, all three cars have very different, interesting approaches. And also in the rear wing setup, all of them have very different rear wing setups. And with the front wing, as I told you, if we see the cars from the front, you can see that the front wing of the McLaren and the Haas is very, very similar, but that the Aston Martin is very different. And you also have, of course, these big cooling louvers on the Aston Martin and this engine bolt right here in the middle. And you can see that these parts are very, very different so you can kill that concern that the 2022 cars will be all the same and that Formula 1 will become a spec series because honestly these cars are much much more different than any 2021 cars were so in 2021 the major difference between the cars was actually the rake of the car whereas in 2022 you can see some very very different geometries around the side pods the front wing the venturis etc so I think that these rules will, be, will bring a lot of cool innovation to Formula 1 again and I'm very very excited for it but in the meantime that's been it for this video I really really hope you guys enjoyed my technical analysis of the MCL 36 again I didn't really like the livery but I think that the car is very very interesting especially their suspension but that's been it for this video I really hope you guys enjoyed and if you did please don't forget to like and subscribe and I will see you at the next car launch so until then goodbye